thanks so much for joining us again today. Last week, we spoke um, about how one of the biggest battles that we face when we face our fears is in our mind, the battles in our minds. Um, I shared a little bit last time about my struggle with postpartum depression and anxiety and how all of that affected me negatively, um, not just emotionally, but physically in so many different ways. Um, I talked about um, Philippians 4 <laughs> verses 6 to 7, where we just kind of shared how Paul talks about um, be anxious for nothing. And I'm not going to go into detail over that. If you missed that episode or if you want to go back, feel free to jump back and, uh, and watch that one to catch up to kind of see where we are at today. Um, but this week, I want to talk about a final point in our series. And we're going to focus on a man in the Bible, um, a man who struggled with fear and with feeling inadequate to do what God had called him to do. And this man is Moses. Um, Moses did not have a very easy life. <laughs> if you read the story of Moses, um, which I'm sure you probably have, or maybe you, you know, heard it growing up in church, Moses started out a Hebrew boy, placed in a basket by his mother, um, raised by a princess, Pharaoh's daughter, and brought up to be a prince in the palace of Pharaoh. Um, but then after killing an Egyptian, he actually ends up becoming an outcast and runs away into the wilderness. Um, and so that kind of takes us to, just to kind of set the scene a little bit, Exodus 3, um, where God speaks to Moses in the form of a burning bush. God, God comes to Moses through the burning bush and he visits him in this, this moment and he tells Moses that he has chosen him to free his people. But before Moses accepted that task, he struggled with fear and he struggled with anxiety and he struggled with overthinking. And so I'm going to read a little bit. Um, we're not going to read the whole story because it can get a little bit long. So if you want to later on read that at home or, or when you have a few minutes, um, read through the story. But I'm just going to read from Exodus 3 verses 9 to 10. And so God, in the form of this burning bush in his presence there, speaking to Moses, he says, Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me. And I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. So God is giving Moses a very clear mission here. Um, and I'm not going to read again all the following conversation that, that he has, but I am going to talk about it. I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little bit what Moses said after God gives him this mission. So God, God tells him, you must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. You're going to lead them out. You're going to bring them to me. You're going to free them. And so Moses responds in verse 11, Moses comes back with, but who am I to appear before Pharaoh? So he starts already doubting himself. And God answers, I will be with you. So God's assuring him, you know what? You may not feel equipped to do this. You might be afraid, but I'm going to go with you. And then Moses goes on and he says, but what if they ask who sent me? And so then God answers him and he says, well, tell them I am who I am. And then Moses, and we'll talk again about what that means in a few minutes when God says, I am who I am. But then after he said that, Moses says, okay, but what if they don't believe me? <laughs> and so Moses is already starting to be afraid of what's going to happen. He's already starting to um, overthink the whole process in his head. And so when Moses says, well, what if they don't believe me? God says, well, you know what? I'm going to show you these miraculous signs. And so God gives him different signs that he could show um, to Pharaoh, to to let his people go. He says, I'm, you're going to take your staff and I'm going to turn it into a serpent and the water is going to turn to blood. And, and God said, I will show miraculous signs. But even then, Moses protested and he was afraid. And we see actually in verse 13 of chapter 4, Moses comes to the point of so much fear that he starts to plead and to beg God to send someone else. His reluctance and his fear were caused by over-anticipation. <laughs> he worried about how people would respond. 
He worried about what people's reactions were going to be, and he felt inadequate to do what God had called him to do. His fear most likely came from his past. Um, you know, he had run away from Egypt after killing an Egyptian. Um, so he's probably thinking in his mind, how could God use him now to save his people? You know, he had tried in his own way to save his people when he had stopped the Israelite from being hurt by this Egyptian and killed the Egyptian. He had tried to take matters into his own hands, if you will. But now God is asking him to go back and God is going to be with him. And when God said to him, I am who I am, that is such an important phrase. <laughs> he says, tell them, I am who I am. And when God says that, he meant, I was, I am, and I will be. See, God is eternal, and God is unchangeable, and he is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so God was telling Moses in that moment, okay, I am who I am. He's saying, I was with you, I am with you, and I will be with you. <laughs> and he's saying, and tell them, tell my people too. I am, I was with them, I am with them, and I will be with them. See, God doesn't change. And this is such a clear message that he was sending through Moses. And this is where this leads us to our point that I wanted to share with you today. You know, fear drives me to lose my focus and distracts me from what's really important. It makes me lose my focus. It distracts me. See, fear distracted Moses in this moment. It turned his thoughts towards the past. It turned his thoughts towards what he, could do, could, what he had done it turned his thoughts towards himself and thinking, how could God use me now? Have you ever asked yourself that? Have you ever struggled with maybe something that God is asking you to do or something that you feel like you're supposed to do, but suddenly you come to this point of, but how could God use me? How could God use me after all I've done? You know, this was a question I think that Moses maybe had in his mind. And that led him to forget who was calling him and that God was calling him to be a part of something so much bigger than himself. See, Moses had run away from his past and God was asking him now to go back and to do things the right way with God by his side. Have you ever built up events in your mind? <laughs> events maybe that you feel that God wants you to do or something that is going to happen and then you panic over it thinking about what might go wrong. I shared a little bit with that last week about that last week about how um, fear often makes our minds go to the worst case scenario. <laughs> you know we know that something's going to happen and so we start to to anticipate we start to over anticipate we start to get upset or nervous or we start to panic and think about how everything could go wrong. And I think this is kind of what Moses was doing in that moment. Um, but it's important to remember that God doesn't ask us to go where he has not provided the means to help. And this is really key. This is really important. See, Moses had a problem with speech. We're not quite sure what, what it is, but that's, we believe that maybe he um, had a stuttering problem or maybe he didn't speak so eloquently. And so Moses was nervous about going and speaking, so nervous that he came to the point of begging God, please send somebody else. But God had already chosen and God had already decided that Moses was the one to go and God was going to send someone to help Moses. He sent Aaron. He said, Aaron will go and Aaron will speak for you, but you need to remember that I am going with you. See, God already had a plan and God was going to provide the means for Moses to help him. God doesn't ask us to do something if he's not going to back us up and, and go with us and help us and lead us through that. Moses simply had to take the step of faith to trust. See, faith points me towards what really matters. And it points me towards God and his power, not just being distracted around myself and my own fear. 
See, what really mattered in Moses' situation was that he put his trust completely in the Lord. Recognizing that we are weak and that we can't do everything on our own is what brings us to relying 100% on God. And that's where he wants us to be. See, you might be going through something in your life where you're struggling, where you think, I'm not, I, I don't feel that I can do that. I don't know how to do what God's calling me to do. And, and the fear and the anticipation and the panic and all these things might set in in you and, and you start to get confused or worried or distracted. But see, this is where God wants us to take that step of faith and remember that he is the one who helps us that we must rely on him because when we rely on him, when we, when we realize that he is everything that we are not, that he can help us, that he can give us everything that we need, that's where he wants us to be because he is strong, because he is everlasting, because he can carry us through the darkness. He can carry us through the valley. He can carry us through those hard times because he is everything that we are not. And he wants to use you for his glory. And he wants to use me for his glory. And he wants to help us and to do amazing things for him. But we need to sometimes just take that little step of faith and trust because he loves us. And this is about God fulfilling his purpose through us and not letting our fears determine who we will be. You know, when I put my faith in Jesus, when I focus my thoughts on him, this helps me to remember that I can't see the whole picture. I don't know if you've ever seen on Facebook or on Instagram or maybe just on the internet somewhere, sometimes these, these pictures go around or circle around of, of an image and it says, you know, what are you looking at? And it shows you, you see a picture and you think like, ooh, I have no idea what that is. And you, you start to kind of think of what it might be that you're looking at. And so you say, okay, it looks like, I don't know, a foot or something. And suddenly you see the whole picture, it zooms out. And you realize that you were looking at something completely different. It wasn't a foot, it was a boat on the ocean or a different, completely different scene. And suddenly you realize that what you have been looking at was just a small part of the picture. See, not being able to see the whole picture, it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> Sometimes in life, actually most of the time in life, we can't. We can't see the whole picture. We don't know exactly what's going on. And the best example that I could think of when I was preparing this message was to think about blinders on a horse. <laughs> Um, as a kid, I used to love helping people and working with horses. And there was one time that I was with a man who was a farmer and taking care of horses. And I asked him because we used to take the horses out and he would put blinders on them. Um, if we were walking through the streets where there were a lot of people and I would say to him, why, why are you using those blinders? What are, what are those for? Um, and he told me that the blinders help the horse to focus on what's ahead of them and to not be afraid or distracted about what's going on around them. See, blinders are not always a bad thing. Maybe we should ask God sometimes to remind us that we have those blinders. Maybe we should ask God to help us to focus on what's ahead and to trust with every step that we take, to trust that he is going to help us and to not look around because once those, those blinders come off and we start looking around, we can start to be afraid. We can start to see what's going on around us and maybe start to panic or start to feel like we're losing control of the situation or start to have um, overthink the process. And, and God is telling us, you know what, sometimes you can't see what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't want you to look around and get distracted. I want you to keep your eyes on me. I want you to focus. I want to help you walk forward. I want to help you take those steps, but you just need to trust in me. If we just look around, the fear is going to distract us. So we need to ask Jesus to help us to accept what we can't see and to trust him as we take those steps forward to keep him to, and ask him 
to keep us focused on what he has called us to do and on whatever task that he's placed before us without allowing fear to dictate our every move, our every step, without overthinking, without over-evaluating. If you struggle with fear, um, maybe with overthinking or with anxiety or feeling inadequate to do what God has called you to do, remember the story of Moses. You're not alone. Many of us go through those moments of fear. Many of us go through those moments of, of wondering um, how we're going to do what we believe that we've been called to do or, or how we're going to face a certain situation. Maybe it's a situation in your family or with your friends or in your church or there can be so many different situations that we face in our, throughout our lives. And remember the story of Moses. Remember, God called him to do something and God had provided the means for him to do it and was going to help him. And he did. God used him for his glory. In the same way, God can use you. In the same way, God can use me. Because it's not about us. Because we don't always see the whole picture. But God does see the whole picture. And remember that God doesn't call the equipped, but he equips those that he calls. That's a really important thing to remember because many times we can feel like we are not prepared to do something that God has asked us to do. But it's true, maybe we're not. But taking that step of, step of faith, trusting that God is prepared, that he is the one who's going to prepare you. He's the one who's going to equip you. He's the one who's going to help you. You don't need to be afraid and get distracted and panic. <laughs> Remember that God says in those moments, I am who I am, which means I was with you. I am with you and I will be with you forever because he doesn't change, because he is solid, because he is with you because he can be our strength when we are weak. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, remember that God is with you. And I'm just gonna say a quick prayer and finish off. God, I just pray for anyone who is watching this this morning. Um, Lord, help us to remember that you are with us. Help us to remember who you are. God, if there are um, people who are struggling, if there are women who are struggling with fear or with anxiety in their life or with overthinking situations or, or feeling overwhelmed, God, please lift them up, raise them up, help them to remember that you are with them, that we can trust in you and that you are our strength in our moments of weakness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us and for joining me. I guess I'm just here by myself. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. And um, God bless you. And remember, God does not call the equipped, but he equips those that he calls. Take care, friends. Mm -hmm.